stay at the Pathfinder School. Repelling in. Double backwards. What's that? You got her? I didn't check your harness, brother. Get back up here. That's good. You sure? Okay. Pretty sure. Well, I'm pretty sure I don't want you to. Not sure. It's a little safer if you put this inside the carabiner. Okay. It's just as fast. So it's a lot safer. That's a good idea. There you go. Alright, bro. On repel! Ready? Tick City. Already? Yeah. You alright? Should be. Alright, buddy. Lot of you. Beauty, huh? Sure is. trust this shit, but I don't trust some of this shit until I've used it a few times. I just want to make sure. Let's see, you got this. Oh, okay. Let's do this. Just in case. Okay. This is good. Yep. Good to go, brother. You ready to rock it. On repel! Repelling! On repel! See you. At the bottom. Just throw all the equipment in the bag. And I'll pull it up. Day one. Advanced scout. At the new Pathfinder school. Inside a cave. We've got a ledge up here. we got some equipment on. It's kind of dark. You can't see it right now. Hopefully when Critter gets this fire going, it'll light this cave up a little bit. And we can see what's going on in here. And we'll keep you guys with us all week. Let's see that. Let's see that war wound, brother. Look at that. Woo, man. Nice. Come on, man. <laughs> I love it. This is a private photo. <laughs> what do you think, Joe? Nice. Nice. nice place. Yeah. Got a fire going now? Good shape. There is. Just like home. Critter, hanging out. All right, day one, Pathfinder Advanced Scout. Looks like the boys have got a fire built up there in our sleeping cave. 
setting up a spit and boiling some water. Got Jason out here. Jason is building us a tripod, looks like, so we can dry our clothes out. We all walked in through the slough after we repelled down and uh, got soaked, so priority says we got to get dried out. Got Joe over here setting up a tracking teaching area, it looks like, in the sand. Just a little spore pit for us. Good. I'm All right, you, Jason and Critter working on a drying rack here so we can get our clothes dry over here by the fire. Found some cordage they scrounged out here. Trash is always good. Making use of the resources they can find. All right, big Dan walks in with the first kill. Nice big fat black racer. We'll skin that dude out and we'll have a little bit of meat going. Hopefully uh, tonight's squirrel hunt will do better. It's all about collecting food now. My stomach's growling looking at that thing. Good job, yeah. Dan. Like yeah, you just pull it right off, man. Just like a sock you got. Just like a get a hold of it and start yanking. You got his esophagus in your hand, so you're gonna pull the guts out too. There you go. Yeah, you're gonna lose some skin pulling it off like that, but just shuck him down the best you can. There you go. There you go, Dan. Good job. Shuck him on down, brother. Just like that. Look at all that freaking meat, man. There you go. You're perfect. Just like exactly. You lost a little bit of tail, and that ain't no big deal at all. Now let's take that gut sack and just leave it laying right here for a minute. Cause we'll use that for a trap later. Find us a good place to put a trap. That gut pile make a great trap. Clean him out. I just could take him over to that creek, man, and clean the blood out of him. And that dude is ready to cook. But we go. Nice, nice. Okay, we're not wasting our resources here. We got the snake skin and the guts from Dan's kill here. We've got one set up in a water trap here. Just a noose. Same trigger we always teach up against a rock here. He's going to have to go inside that noose to get the carcass. And I'm hoping that's what he does. We'll walk over and look at the other one. Okay, here's our other trap. Got the guts of that snake wrapped around the trigger strick. Hair trigger here. We got him funneled in from two sides here. Three sides, actually. So he's got to come in this way to get it. And we got the noose staked out on the outside. Hopefully this will render some meat tomorrow. All right, back from setting the traps up with Dan. Got Dan's snake on the spit here. Looking good. Calories. Yay! All right, Joe comes back with the second kill. Dinner for the night. Yeah, man. All right, we got snake and we got squirrel. We ain't starving. We're doing good. Okay, we got another toggle snare sitting here with guts on it. All right here's his avenue in. We've got the rest of it blocked off with foliage. Comes in here and pulls down on the bait. Up he goes. So how's that squirrel looking there? Looks edible. All right. Better, couple better meat sources here. Got a snake on a stick right here. Can't really see it. It's in the dark. There we go. We better, got half a squirrel. Better picture of the snake. <laughs> Almost looks like a fake one. And half a squirrel. Because Joe Kellum's already being a pig. Yeah. <laughs> passing it out. I'm passing it out. But after Cook not having any sure food all day, it's level. time, right? Here. Can't even see you, Jason. What's that? I can't even see you in this camera. Not enough light. Six twenty-five in the morning, day two. Time to go hunting, huh, boys? Shortly. Shortly. All right, fellas. Morning of day two here. We got some stuff on the drying rack. We're starting tracking class at ten o'clock. Everybody took off to go hunting this morning. I came back a few minutes ago with some wood for the fire and. Got it stoked up, and about the time I stoked the fire up, I heard a shotgun blast. So I'm guessing somebody's got something dead, and we're going to have some breakfast. So far, this is day two. Day one, we had a black snake and a squirrel. Day two, it's still early. 
We'll see what happens. Do that, I mean, disinfection stuff? Yeah, you can touch it. You just, you, I mean, you just want to remember, you know, and then when you're completely stumped. Yeah, that's sand, so that's. Right. When you're completely stumped, look back and what's a likely line, okay? What's the likely path through here? Through there. Right up through there. Okay, look this way. Is there any major vegetation disturbed? No. Yeah, there would be if you had to hump right over there. that, yeah. That would all be disturbed and or dragged that way. So your likely line of travel is right through here. Now, does that mean, again, don't make, don't mm. force the track. Mm. It's right there. They were sure they See had where I stepped here. directly on that and snapped it off? There. What about the tops of that plant that are pushed down flat now? Right. The plants, yep, that's what that plant's been knocked flat. It doesn't grow that way. No. Okay. Now, can that be from a, a fall? Possibly. Yeah. Okay. You know, a fall of a branch. But, but that's not you, for sure. You, yeah. yeah but if you move it and it springs back up, or oh. see how that's bent right well, that's actually cool. It's still being held by that. It's still other it's being held down. It's being pushed down. There it's sprung you know, up. All that evidence goes together. So you got a print right in this area. Where would your next likely one be? Alternating. Right. So you got this is what foot? Left, left foot. Left foot. Where's the right? The harder it's going to be. You know, you lose your sharpness. You lose the moisture content. You you, you lose um, the shine. Now, the rhythm's still there, but it's based on terrain. You get into a sunny area like that, and it's going to disappear real fast. I just had a class up in Grayling we did where as an instructor I walked through literally with a machete and those guys came in an hour later and couldn't find it because that stuff, it was so dry, it hadn't rained there the entire season. There was no green vegetation. All there was was pine dust. I walked through there they couldn't find it. It looked that old. All right, so it's really based on the weather, based on what you've got going on in the area and uh, how careful the person was being. You know, if you've got a guy walking through here like this, right, and he's stumbling over stuff, it gets pretty easy pretty quick. All right, but you've got a guy being real careful, you're not likely to see it. I carry multiple. When I go out tracking, this is really all I use. I've got my camera in there. You know, good pencil for taking the notes. You know, small light for, again, shadow effect. Actually, fire steel in there, but. No. Good Critical. man. Yeah, always got one. Just <laughs> Good in man. Case, just in always case. got fire. Um, and a couple of other things: a small part of string and a couple of feathers. I usually just pick up what I got on the trail, so I can always set a signpost if I want to. Uh, small retractable tape measure. Okay, we haven't gone over it yet, but this will give you the, uh, the the stride of the animal. You can lay that along there and uh, and check that. And uh, you know, there's times you need a flexible tape. Um, it's, it's not, when you're, you're dealing with different um, inclines, declines, it's, it's not as exact, but it's certainly a good tool. Thin pancake mix. Mm -hmm. Again, you want to try to pour this straight down the stick if possible, and as close to the track as possible. No rush here, you just want to try to fill those voids without disturbing any detail. You'll see some dirt move, but you can only do so much with it. You can do the best you can. Just because you have the toes filled doesn't mean you don't want to be careful around here. You can knock because the ridges you can off. lose the ridge and you, you, you lose your overall measurement. And the reason this doesn't work in snow is the curing process, just like concrete or any oh, other heat, it produces heat. out so you can try to settle that. I see some of the air bubbles coming up. I 
And what you'll do is you wait for this to dry and come back and probably, depending on the weather and whether or not that's in the sun, as little as 15 minutes or longer than half an hour, you come back and use a twig, something, and you can actually take and write in there the date. You can't do it yet, but you can write initials in there, you can write the date in there, and then that documents the date, what it is, maybe even a location or your name or whatever you want in there. And you wait anywhere from 6 to 24 hours, come back and you can pop that right back out. Okay, here we are, day two. two, day two, slim pickings, no bueno on the meat sources so far, 1832. And boiled acorns suck. And boiled acorns suck. Dan says he's going to head up to the top of this ridge, we had some doves come in here last night. I'm going to stay down here, hopefully not take his head off in the meantime, and wait for the doves to come in and hopefully we're going to get some doves. I got one small frog and... He ain't going to be enough to even feed one of us, let alone four or five of us. So, that's it for today. We're down. One student, one instructor. Four of us left. Looking for meat sources here. So far, nothing. Waiting on these doves to come in. Hopefully it'll happen. We've had, so far, one snake. One small gray squirrel. And I pinned down a frog earlier so we can have that tonight, but that ain't going to be enough to feed us. Might as well just make a trap set with that. We got a couple traps out. I think we got three out right now. Low percentage, but they're all baited, so that helps. We've been using our guts for bait off the animals we've been killing. We got Dan over the pond trying to gig some more frogs. We got the other Dan up on the ridge. Joe Kellum's out on the hunt. And I'm standing here trying to pattern where these doves came in last night. There's some small water areas right in here along this path in front of this cave and I think these doves are coming in for their evening drink. We'll see what happens. Okay here we are. It's about 8.30. Joe looks like he's making some sassafras tea. I know you can't see this because it's pretty dark. Sassafras tea and we got some nettles boiling up over there. Got some nettles boiling up. You know what that means boys. Meat sources, no bueno. Down to four guys. Dan, can't see him. Too dark. Dan, can't see him. Too dark. Joe, Still can barely see him. See him. Yeah. Too, dark. Too dark. And myself. We lost one to sickness. We lost one to bugs. So the four amigos are going to finish it up. See you tomorrow. All right, fellas. It's uh, 1252 on day three. Three shotgun blasts this morning. All misses. Uh, one of the guys with us had two opportunities at birds and one at a squirrel. Missed all three times. So far we're still living on exactly the same food that we had the first day, which is one snake, one squirrel. We shared some nettles last night and a few hickory nuts. It's getting to the point now, three days in, you stand up too fast, you get dizzy. You go uphill too fast, you get dizzy. You look up for too long, like it's a squirrel nest I'm watching up here in the trees. You look down, you get dizzy. So, lack of food starts taking a toll on you. Hopefully we'll find something here shortly. Everybody's out hunting, four of us left. Everybody's out looking for food at this point. We got plenty of water, we got shelter, we got fire. Food is the definite priority. Traps this morning were empty. All right, Dan and Joe, getting ready to boil up some nettles. The hunting is for not right now. Day three. Nothing going out there anywhere. Three fifteen. So far, what do we had to eat, guys? One, one snake and one squirrel. One snake and one squirrel. Four guys yeah. left. <laughs> The Mighty Hunter returns. All right, Dan's back. What do you got, Dan? The Mighty Hunter returns with 15 tadpoles. 15 tadpoles. All right, it is what it is. Got to eat, right? <laughs> Got to eat. Let's cook them up. Okay. So, Dan from Canada. As of this morning, you've gone three solid days as of this morning, and now it's 6 o'clock at night. So, you've went three and a half days now with 
a black snake shared between four guys, a small squirrel shared between four guys, a few nettle leaves, acorns, and that's about it. So tell me how you're feeling. Ah, not too bad, not too bad. Yeah. Occasionally, uh, you, if you move too fast, you get a little uh, lightheaded, but uh, go nice and slow. Take your time doing what you got to do, and uh, it's doable. It's all right. Okay. So lessons learned from out here besides the 12 gauge? Yeah, yeah I need more practice with the 12 gauge. Uh, <clears throat> well, game isn't always crawling all over the place, and uh, you got to be prepared to deal with that. Okay, Dan Moore, part of the Pathfinder Youth, out here on the Advanced Scout. Again, it's been uh, three and a half days now on probably less than 300 calories of actual food value. How are you feeling? I'm feeling a little bit weak, like moving a little slow in both my brain and my body. But I um, sure get a boost off of just a few calories here and there. But uh, it's a tough go. Um, you might live three weeks without food, but you're not going to be happy about it. You uh, got any advice for anybody out there if they're going to do something like this or if they haven't trained like this before? Pack some food with you. Be sure to pack some food. Um, get your shelter, your fire, your water, and get right after getting some food because um, it's not too long until you start to feel the effects of not having enough calories in your body. And uh, you become very tired. You become lethargic. You, it's then it becomes more important that you go and get food, which means you have to go spend, expend calories. Get after it right away. That's what I would say. As soon as you have time, start thinking about getting some food. Okay. You want to stick this through? We got no, the tadpole soup the going around here, guys. I, don't want to grab that. And I tasted it, and it left a nasty aftertaste in my mouth. But Dan from Canada over here says it tasted just like chicken soup. So we're going to get a third taste tester here to find out. See if Cheers. I'm just the only one. Dave, I think you need to try it again. All right, let me give it another shot then. Maybe a swig bad. of water before? Nah, maybe not. Let me try it again. Try Look at this stuff, this guys. In our mouths. All right. There's nothing left. These things disintegrated pretty much when we boil them up. So you pretty much just got a broth. Here it goes. Still got it, man. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, nothing. Huh. All right, look at that chunk of tadpole right there, man. Woohoo! All right, we gotta bon have appetit. some of that, man. We're gonna have to have that. Don't spend a whole lot of time chewing, eh? I want to see what it tasted like in my mouth. Yeah. Same, same like nasty aftertaste. Yeah. It's got to be because I smoke. It has to be. It has to be. Huh? That's weird. I mean, it just like an oyster going down it was slimy, but yeah, it went straight down. Bigger. No aftertaste. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Bon appetit, Dan. Oh, I'm full. <laughs> You're full, huh? <laughs> okay. It's not, it doesn't taste like anything. I mean, other than that nasty aftertaste I had, but you guys don't taste that, so it's going to taste just like that water, Dan. Yeah. Because yeah. it slid right down like an oyster. Yeah. A few bits of grit. That's probably the worst part for me. The I'm grit? A, I'm a grit guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just I'll don't, find I don't chew it, I just swallow yeah, it. Yeah, I find that two pieces of sand and an asparagus and just, ah. So tadpole <laughs> soup's the menu for tonight, boys. <laughs> wow. We're resorting to desperate measures. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to see. Tadpole, huh? All right. Dan Let's with the tadpole. The there it goes. Down the gullet. I'm sure you've had better, but. Like you say, the grit in it. So just tastes like the water, pretty much, yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah. It's calories. I'm so going to make sure there's some stuff here for Joe. How much would you pay for that? No, I wouldn't pay anything for it, but <laughs> if it's food, it's food. So got to save some for Joe, though. That's what I just said. I was checking to see if we He's get some out. chunks for him. unsetting a couple traps because tomorrow morning we're walking out of here, so no sense trapping anything tonight. We're going to try to shoot a couple doves here in a little while. Hopefully get a decent meal in us, better than these tadpoles. Yeah. Okay, we're out here with Joe Kellum. Last night at the Pathfinder Advanced Scout, Joe. How's your experience been with uh, four days with about 200 calories? Uh, it's been, you know, overall an awesome experience. It really teaches you the limits of what you and your body can handle. 
Uh, it's taught me that uh, you know that whole saying of mind or matter really matters. Uh, if you think you're okay out here, you're fine. If you start thinking you're sick or not feeling good or not going to make it, it really plays tricks on you. So it's great experience, well worth it. Um, taught me to be real careful with what I eat out there. You never know uh, what it's going to do to you. Tried a few wild edibles today, a little coffee that Critter left behind. Too much for my system came right back up. So you got to be real careful. Reintegrate your system. Uh, overall, real good. So that's All right. about it for now, man. Last night, brother. Absolutely. Almost there. Doing good. All right, Dan Moore came back with the homemade trash fish basket here. Fish trap, and he got one minnow in there. Pretty good size one. And he's already had one today. And we're passing the food around, so Canada Dan's going to take this guy. Oh, bluegill. That's a lot of food, man. So it looks like a little baby bluegill. Bottoms up. Mm, good stuff. Straight down the gullet. Oh, yeah. All right, man. <laughs> cool. Okay, here we are. Last day of advanced scout. Six go in, four go out. Joe Callum and the two Dans, Dan Moore and Dan, forgive me, I call you Canada Dan. What's your last name, Dan? Steinwinder. Steinwinder. I've seen it enough times, I should remember that. That was good. All right, so day four, it's actually been about four and a half days since these, well, actually it's been pretty much five days since these guys ate. Uh, last time they ate good food was Friday morning, so Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Monday morning, Friday morning, Saturday, okay, about four days. And we've had probably two or three hundred calories all the time we've been out here. What do you think, guys? I think we're feeling it, but we're doing all right. <laughs> ready, all right. ready to get out of here? Oh, yeah. Let's hump it out.